welcome to Mortgage 101. I'm Lisa Dwyer, and um, I'll be your host, and I'm going to try to educate you um, on mortgage um, principles and programs and um, just how to try to keep your best and biggest asset, your home, in the forefront of uh, your pocket, so to speak. I'm a state licensed mortgage lo loan officer. Uh, I have been a loan originator for over 13 years, um, and I am local here, so I, I do want to help my community um, try to save some money and get educated. Um, I've seen the real estate market go up and down, and, um, and I've stuck with it, even though sometimes it beats you up pretty hard. Um, but I love my job, and I really do care about helping people. So that's why I'm here, and that's, what, that's why I do what I do every day. Um, I, I find that helping others through exciting times like purchasing their first home or, um, or even refinancing and saving hundreds of dollars a month, very rewarding. So I'm happy to be here. I hope that you uh, gain some great knowledge from the shows and, uh, and I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. Um, m my goal for the show is really just to, uh, just in a fun, interesting way, try to educate you on different programs. Um, and I'm going to invite different guests every week and talk about different topics. Um, and, and I'm not going to try to sell you anything, and I'm not going to tell you how great rates are. I'm just going to try to um, assist you in understanding how to save money. Um, uh, we'll have our show's programs available for, for you to review um, because sometimes I'll get excited and start talking too fast, and uh, you, you'll miss something. And... Uh, and you'll want to want to know what I just said. So I will have all of the um, show's information available on our website at mortgage101mtg101.net, or you can call the office where I work, and um, and I can mail you out uh, the the simple outline as well. Uh, the number is two four eight six two seven seven two eight three. Please please know the subject of the of the title or the title of the show, um, so that way. I'll know which one to send you when you call. Um, if you have any questions regarding the content of the show, you can email us um, or you can um, give us a call and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, I really thank you for watching and, um, and I, do want, I do want your suggestions on show topics and any questions that you may have regarding the show. Um, and, and I really want to make this more personal about you and your home. Um, today's show, we're going to talk about grant money. And our special guest is my coworker, Jessica Carroll. And, um, and she is the operations manager um, for Mortgage One. So thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for having me, Lisa. Um, I'm excited about the Mishta grant. I think it's going to be a great opportunity for, um, for the homeowners to uh, obtain some money for free. That's exactly so what it's I'm all about. I'm excited to hear about what MISHTA is. So um, can, you, can you help inform um, yes. our viewers? MISHTA um, is an acronym that stands for Michigan State Housing Development Authority. They were established here in our state in 1966. Um, they're a great program. They help provide financial and technical assistance through public and private partnerships to create and preserve safe and affordable, decent housing. That's awesome. For our residents. So, so in, in a community, um, it won't matter if it's um, a city, a town, a village, rural area. It's for anywhere. Correct. Anywhere. And, um, and they do, I understand, um, Mishta also helps with some homeless they, grants. They as do. Well. That's great. What a great, um, what a great state that we live in, Michigan. And, and what a great opportunity for the government to kind of help out the people who need it. Right. So how are the government programs funded? The Mishta loans and operating expenses are financed through the sale of tax exempt and taxable bonds, as well as notes um, from private investors and um, not coming from tax revenue. So we just want everybody to know that these are not additional millages assessed to your property taxes in order to give the grant funds. Right. So it's not coming out of my tax money. Correct. Okay. All right, it's not coming out of my tax money. It's not coming from when I pay my taxes, it's not going to pay somebody who is buying a home right now. No. Okay, great. 
great. Um, well, I understand that there was a large amount of money um, given to Michigan for this. And exactly how much was given and how long do you think it will last? There's $15 million. There's no telling how long it'll last. The grants come on first come, first serve basis. Um, as of January 11th, there was $13.195 million left, and the program was rolled out in mid-December. Wow. And Mortgage One, our company, I mean, we've used a lot of the money. We've used, you know, a couple hundred thousand. We have. In a short amount of time. Uh, it is going to go fast. People really need to know that this is a, a wonderful opportunity for them, but it is not going to last very long. Right. Fifteen million sounds like so much money, <laughs> but when you think about it, it's really not. It's really not. It's going to go really fast. Um, now, it, it's given on a first come, first serve basis, and that's really what people need to know. Right. You can start looking for a home now, and you may not find something for three or four months, and that money may already be depleted. It yeah. may be gone. So we always ask that people have it, um, their own funds as a, a backup, and if we can get this money for you at closing, we will absolutely do so. Great, great. Now, if I was just walking in, um, how much money could I get? It, it depends for your situation. Any first time home buyer who hasn't owned a home in the last three years can. So I, oh wait, I'm sorry to interrupt. So I could have owned a home five years ago. Right. And I can still get this. First time home buyer, explain exactly what that means. It means that you haven't owned any home, um, parcel of land, anything in the last three years. So it's 2013 now, since 2010 is what they're looking for or longer. And um, they need to, um, you can actually own a mobile home, like in a park, as long as it's not affixed to any land, because we have had that come up. And we've secured grant funds actually for a person who lived in a mobile home in a park, but didn't technically own a piece of land that was a tax parcel ID. Ah, I see, I see. All right, that's awesome. And you do need to purchase a single family, one unit home that you are going to be owner occupying as your primary residence. So, so the money that I can get would be three thousand dollars for anybody. That I could get three thousand. Correct. So, what kind of house? How does that work? What, um, how well, much house could I get? You have to get pre-approved for how much house you can get, and make sure that you you know qualify for the mortgage, which Lisa can help you with. Um, they also do require that you it can't be more than twenty five percent of the sales price of the home. So in order to get three thousand dollars, you have to purchase a twelve thousand dollar home or more to get the three thousand. Anything less than that, you will get twenty five percent of the sales price. Also, great news for military vets um, or active duty military, they can get up to five thousand dollars of the grant money. Oh, great. That's great. And they so so just to reiterate so that we're we're all on the same page so we all understand if you as long as you have not owned a home for 3 years, correct. And it doesn't matter how much of a house I want to buy. Right. If I buy a $100,000 house or a $500,000 house, it doesn't matter. It's just as long as it's over $12,000. Um, for, for the 3000 the 25% the does apply to the veterans, 5000 as well, so that would actually put you in a $20,000 bracket so vets or can higher. 5000 if they buy a house for 20000 or more and anyone else, right. a non-military. And if not, you can still get 25% of the sales price of the home. Great. That's awesome. Um, can any mortgage company give this grant money and close these types of loans? No, um, they cannot. Uh, you have to be a registered vendor. Um, mortgage company as well as the title company. They will only send the funds to title companies who have been authorized as well. All right. Um, when when the registered vendor, so so when people are um, stating that they can do this, they really just have to make sure that they're going to a registered lender. Correct. Someone who is approved. Um, all right. Um, I think that for now, um, if they just look at, uh, they can go to our website at mortgage101.net or they can go to michigan.gov slash mishta.
Um, I'm program director. Uh, production supervisor. Producer, editor. Mm. All right, Mr. Tweedle, are you ready? I'm an editor at Oxford Community Television. Hey. I am the station manager. What? We're rolling. <laughs> I'm proud to be a producer here at Oxford Community Television. Action. What do you do at OCTV? I do science in the news and auto talk. Politicians! I'm sorry, I didn't say the right things. What do I do? I'm a jack of all trades. Actually, I almost got to play a dead body. You, get more, you made more money if you played a dead body. I love working here. I graduated from Bell and Howell. I went to school for it. Team player here. Hi, Ellen. Hey. <laughs> and I bring all the shows that you watch together. I've been in the business for 40 years. I've uh, been a production manager, I've been a program manager, I've been a general manager. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Wham! Okay. Wham! <laughs> I'm a big part of the Addison Living Show. OCTV has some of the most imaginative people working here. You can take a story and turn it into something visual. I'm constantly an individual who wants to learn things. I do this because we are your voice. Oh, I love to do music stuff here with OCTV. I love enthusiasm. I love people who enjoy their job. He can do that. Anything about broadcasting, I, I just really loved it. We want you. I am. 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 I am OCTV. 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 can do this. talking to Jessica Carroll um, with Mortgage One, our company, about grants, and I just think it's amazing. And it sounds like people who are really thinking about moving should really try to take advantage of this great opportunity. Um, now, just to reiterate, these grants are available for all types of loans. Correct. All right. Any so. sort of loan that you want, FHA, conventional, rural housing, you can also couple them with the MISHTA programs themselves. Right, so we can piggyback them. Correct. And to piggyback is to use these funds along with other funds that may be available. So um, a homeowner's assistant program, um, uh, seller concessions, gift of equities, gift money, um, anything like that. So it, it will go along with in conjunction to right. any it's, other program. You, you have to come in and get pre-approved, but we can definitely tell you what your minimum required was, but this can go towards your down payment for all the programs. That's awesome. And, and what about, um, is there income limitations? No, there's not. It's, that's what's beautiful about this program. There's no income limitations. A lot of the other MISHTA programs do have income limitations, household restrictions, same, same with the rural development, um, with how much is coming into the household in order to qualify for the program. So just to reiterate, um, you and I know this language very well. So um, for our viewers, you can make $100,000 a year 
two hundred thousand dollars a year, and it doesn't matter. This money is still available to you. Right, because it's a it's a grant. It's like a gift, basically. Great. Hear that? Michigan's giving you a gift. Take advantage of it. Um, right, what's the catch? Is there a lien on my home? Um, is there a second mortgage? Um, what is there any catch to this at all? No, not at all. There's no lien. There's no second mortgage. There's nothing put on the the title work of your home that's attached to your parcel ID. Um, that that's what's really great about it because a lot of the down payment assistance and different type of programs that are out there for the cities, which again that you have to qualify for the grant, income wise, household size, things to that nature will actually attach a soft second to your home. You have to live there for five years and repay it if you don't. Um, this is not, it's like free money. Why not take it? Right, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, we, right now, people need all the help that they can get. Exactly. You know, any, any type of um, assistance, especially the kind that you don't have to pay back, is definitely advantageous, for sure. So yeah, and, and the thing that I'm telling um, my clients when they come in is, um, just be available, have available the funds um, to close your loan because we don't know how long this is gonna last. We really don't, so uh, have a backup. Yes. It don't count on this money right now uh, to, put, to be your down payment or to cover all your closing costs. Right, it's yeah. actually great because if you get the grant, you have it, it's the extra money, you don't have to take it to closing, you can use it, furniture, moving, appliances, whatever else you may need for your new home. Right. Right, so it is first come, first serve. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Um, the process of the grant money is, is what? Um, they come in to the mortgage company and they would um, pre-qualify. Correct. Correct, so, so you'd come and see me or any loan professional and you would get pre-qualified for a loan, not necessarily for this. You would go through the whole process and once it's closed, once it's clear to close, Right, you have to be have a property, obviously, so that you can get the grant. Um, and once all the steps are done through the pre-qualification, processing, underwriting, appraisal, everything to that nature, when they give you the final clear to close from the underwriters, you can then request your grant funds in conjunction with a set closing date. Right, and then um, the government sends the grant money, EFT, Right, the electronically fund transfer it to the approved title company. The title companies have to be approved as well as the lenders. The lender will fill out all the paperwork for you, um, but you do have to sign the grant form, which is also an affidavit saying that you haven't owned a home Correct. Yes. in the last three years. I actually, I have a copy of the grant form here, and um, it's great to show everybody. And if you call or email us, we'd be happy to mail, fax, email it to you, whatever you'd like, so that you can get a copy of it and see what it's all about. You fill in your name, your property address. You do have to include your social security number. Um, the mortgage company will fill in their information. Title company will fill in their information, which we can do as the lender or any lender can. And then you select your grant amount. But the key thing is to be clear to close with your lender because you do have to have a set closing date. Um, MISHDA does require five to six business days to wire the funds to the approved title company. Doesn't include any federal holidays. Right. So here we are trying to get our loans closed so fast because we have right. deadlines for purchase agreements and we have people that are being evicted out of their apartment or you know they have a time limit so they have to be moved out at a certain date and we get our clear to close and then they're going to say, I want to close tomorrow, but I need the Mishta money. And what do we have to tell them Please every time? Tell I'm terribly sorry. We would love to close <laughs> right. your loan tomorrow, but unfortunately, if you want the money, it's the five or six extra days. Business day. Business day yes. is so totally worth mad. it, though. <laughs> they people do. do get upset, but As long I mean, as we tell you up front, this is the deal. But once we we have the clear close and we send these, this is the reservation of the funds. Once everybody's right. filled this everything your out. Your, your loan officer will sign it, the home buyer, the co-home buyer along with the underwriter and then filling in the title company information. Great. We also so. have um, information, the basics um, from the National Mortgage Settlement Program from MISHTA that we can send this to you with yes. all the general information yep. as well as the grant forms so that you can see a copy of it. Now, okay, so I've went through the process and I've went through all my conditions and, and done everything that I had to do. Um, I've got my clear to close. These are ordered and something happens my gift money falls through. Um, the seller changes their, you know, you know how many things can happen during Correct. a mortgage loan. Um, what if I've ordered the funds and we do not close? Do I get to keep that money? 
Absolutely not. Oh. It, it's only in conjunction <laughs> with purchasing the home. The lender is responsible and the title company for notifying Mishta um, that the closing will not be taking place and then the title company has to wire the funds back. Okay, so so it's for closed loans Correct. when they're closing, of course. Right. In order for us to finalize the funds, we do have to send over, you know, the final signed HUD one settlement statement, which is um, breaking out all the details of the finances for the transaction. Perfect. Now, um, okay, so let's say I've got gift money and I've got the seller's going to help me pay for some of the closing costs um, through concessions, um, and I've I've put too much money. I, I've put my three and a half percent down. Let's say it's FHA, and I, my down payment required was three and a half percent. Do I get money back? Can I get money back at the closing? The only way that you can get money back is money that you've put in. Um, they call it a paid, you know, paid into the transaction, paid outside of closing, or POC, is what we call it in the mortgage industry. <laughs> right. So if you put a thousand dollar earnest money deposit on the home, we verified it as the lender. And um, the seller was giving you enough concessions to cover your closing costs and prepaids, and the grant covers your entire down payment. You can get up to that thousand dollars back that was verified. Okay, great. Well, um, is there anything else that you think that we forgot that we need to talk about? Um, I think that this is just a great opportunity um, for new new homeowners to uh, take advantage of this grant money while it's still available. And we're just going to touch base real quick just to reiterate. To make sure that we're all under uh, the same understanding, um, you just have to have not owned a home for three years. Correct. Doesn't matter how much you make, what, how much you're putting down on the house, um, and or or what type of house. It just has to be your primary residence, um, and you are going to move in. Correct. Okay, great. Well, I hope that. Um, I hope that everybody, uh, all of the viewers, get the opportunity to uh, take advantage of this free money from the government um, to purchase their home. And um, when we come back, we're going to talk about some mortgage documents. Um, today's document is going to be the borrower's authorization. And, um, and if we have time, we're going to talk about the application. Um, so we'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Returning to the crash site is tough. Made a traffic stop on a crash. It as I was about to go and get my dog out of my car, a drunk driver struck the back of my canine SUV. The mirror and spotlight on my driver's side pillar uh, struck me square in the face. What I do remember is what everybody... I remember what everybody did for me. Living Legends helps cops and their families in need. Please donate today. You better get yourself ready. Is the seat belt on your couch fastened tight? Do you have a file handy for chewed off fingernails? Make sure you do and hang on tight because the fat man coming. other cop shows, others that want your attention, but nothing will command your attention like the amazingly horrendous things you'll see people heartlessly do on Fat TV. The men and women of Fugitive Apprehension TV. The American Legion, we're a powerful force for the nation. We're the largest veteran service organization in the nation with two and a half million members. And when you add to that, the American Legion Auxiliary and the sons of the American Legion, we have a family of four million members working hard every day for our veterans, our youth, and our communities. Go to legion.org to find out more about the American Legion's commitment of service to America.
Welcome back. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope that the grant information um, was very beneficial and informative, and uh, we didn't make it too boring for you. We try, we're excited about it because we know what it does for our clients and how it excites them and saves them money. So, um, so we hope that you did gain some perspective on the grants that's available right now. Today's mortgage document that we're going to talk about, uh, just for a quick minute, is called the Borrower Certification and Authorization. And, um, and what we do with this form is we have you sign it and it gives us authorization to do certain things for your loan. Um, do you want to reiterate a little bit about it? Yeah, it's really important because part of the pre-qualification process for us to make sure that we can give you the most accurate um, pre-approval amount um, and get you comfortable with a new mortgage payment is um, gathering things such as income documentation. So lots of times we use this form to get things uh, from your employer so that they can tell us you know, what your income is and, and what you make so that we can properly qualify you for a home and you're at a comfortable payment. Right, right. So the borrower's authorization is our approval from you. You're signing a document that says, I'm authorizing you to release information for the necessary um, people that we need to contact. So as a loan officer, I'm going to need to contact your bank to get a verification of deposit or a bank statement. And they're going to say to me, um, well, I'm not going to give you this. I need something signed by the borrower, by our member, um, that is going to allow us to give you this, you know, personal information. So we send them this borrower's authorization stating that you allow us to speak to them on your behalf. Um, so banks, um, employers, we do verification yep. of employments. It's also very important when it comes to pulling your credit report. We cannot pull your credit report without your signed release to do so. That's your personal and privy information. So Yes, so this is a very important, we picked this for our first episode because it is a very important form and one that even if you don't proceed with the application, we get signed. Um, up by, front, yeah. yes, just to release the fact that, we, you know, to pull your credit and get you pre-approved. Right, yes. Oh, and we also use these for our tax returns. We have to get tax returns, um, uh, 4506, we'll talk about that on a different show, but um, right. when we send, um, we request from the IRS to show us your transcripts of your tax returns, and again, they want the borrower certification of authorization. Just kind of reviewing it real quick, and it just says, um, it, such information includes but is not limited to employment history and income, bank and money markets, um, similar account balances, credit history, and copies of income tax returns. So it's pretty much everything we touched on. But right. And it's just, just a one-page form. You sign it, put your Social Security number on it, and, uh, and we keep it in the file and send this out when we request your information. Right. So that's a borrower certification and authorization. Um, most lenders use it. Uh, they're all pretty similar. So I don't think it's uh, anything right. out of we the ordinary. We do still need you for the pre-approval, though, to supply some of your own documents. And this is, you know, a way to get additional information. You know, what, say something's wrong on your credit report and we need to correct it for mortgage purposes. This form will help us allow it to do so. But it doesn't mean necessarily that you do not have to provide us with your pay stubs or bank right. statements by any means. Don't think signing one form is going to get you out of bringing the stacks of stuff I need from you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. I'm going to give you a list this big and you have to bring it all back. Well, I think that'll conclude our show today. Um, at Mortgage 101, um, we just want you to understand um, and, and be educated on your mortgage and anything that surrounds mortgages. Uh, we've got a great lineup of shows. I'm really, really excited um, to try and help you understand about mortgages, about appraisals, about um, your credit report. We're going to have credit specialists on the show and talk about your credit report. We're going to have um, the title company here talking about for, uh, foreclosures and short sales and um, I have so many people to, uh, to introduce you to, and um, I just want you to feel comfortable, and if you have any questions regarding this show or any other, please feel free to call me directly at 248-627-7283, or you can go to our website, um, and it's mortgage101mtg101.net. Thank you so much, and have a blessed day. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you for Appreciate having it. me.